So it's a lovely Sunday morning. The rain has stopped. The sun is starting to come out. It all feels nice and fresh, like spring is coming. I can see my rhubarb has sprouted um, and my snowdrops are going over and my bluebells are pushing through. I've just finished watching Jamie Oliver's Yes Chef Master course on how to make um, the ultimate pasta dough and I'm ready to sit down and build my uh, B17 for the group build um, but this morning um, I have something else I want to do first which is this. This came yesterday um, it's the all new tooled 8.8 centimeter flak Aufs 9 ton Vomag from Das Werk and their partners um, and I want to do a first impressions before I do anything else. So let's take a look. Hello, welcome to First Impressions and welcome to Model Kit Stuff. Um, every week we have a look at another kit and this week it's this one from Dazwerk which is 100% new moulds. Uh, they tell you it's 100% Dazwerk production but actually that's not true. Um, it uh, does work is basically the, comp the, the base company that brings lots of different elements together and in the bottom here it says in cooperation with um, three other companies um, and of course there is a fourth one which is Tacom who actually produced the plastic for them and I suspect the box. Why do I suspect the box? Because Tacom boxes are the only boxes I ever get where the lid is a different size to the bottom which is <laughs> what we've got here. There's about four millimeters of space in it. So um, yeah, so that's how I know it's Tacom. Um, instantly can tell but I do know that they work with Tacom anyway. Um, artwork on the top is really really nice. Um, many of you I'm sure will have seen this. There's been a lot of talk about this kit. I saw it um, built up at the Telford model show um, and it looked proper stunning. Um, the, the Vomag is a very long uh, vehicle with this anti-aircraft gun on it uh, and it looks very very different to um, anything else. Um, so yeah very very nice interesting uh looking vehicle um and we've got um a picture here of it in its uh nighttime anti-aircraft role with um what looks like um is that is that a wellington no it's not a wellington it's got four is it a lancaster could be a lancaster um being shot down and searchlights going on in the background and a bomb city in the background as well so uh, lots going on in the imagery i quite like it gives you an idea of uh of the vehicle they've not put any people around to show it in motion but what we can see is when it's in its shooting mode it's got these support stands which makes it a little bit more interesting and, att and attractive and it has quite a low profile actually um, and you and when the gun is folded up it faces backwards so that's sort of why and then you need all the the personnel in the front of the vehicle so it's a self-contained unit so it, it's quite an extended vehicle um, which you will see if I turn this onto my onto its side there we go you can see how long that vehicle is going to be um, so yeah really interesting um, and we've got four paint schemes um, three of them being grey, one of them being this camouflage. Um, now the three grey ones are all Germany. Um, we've got um, Bremen, um, well it says Flak Regiment 42I stroke 42, MOTS Bremen, um, Osler Bau Bausen, uh, North Germany, July 42, I'm sure that didn't pronounce that right. Um, then we've got the same flak regiment, to presume, so I don't have to pronounce it again, um, at the Renault factory, uh, Brilliant, Paris, France, um, 2nd and 3rd of March, 42. So I don't know whether there was something that particularly happened on, on those dates, um, but it, it's pretty much identical, the vehicle, other than there is another ring on it for another um, shoot down um, uh, 
otherwise it, it looks exactly the same. Um, then you've got the same flak regiment again, this time um, St. Catherine Essen, uh, steel, Germany, March 43. Um, and again, the difference is lots of shot downs. Um, and then the last one is a different regiment, I, flak regiment 40, Halsas Bastille, I don't know if that's pronounced right either, um, uh, Pfizer Bastel, Budapest, Hungary, February 1945, um, and there's lots of rings um, on that one, and this camouflage. So we can see that um, really most people, I suspect, are probably going to be doing the... Um, the grey one, but the, the camouflage one is a very interesting idea, isn't it? So, um, tells us a little bit about the company, if you want to contact them, that they're, they're a German company. Um, and if I look at the other end, um, it basically has the same information that's on the top. That's the same on both ends. And then this side, we have um, our features. Um, so it says um, not for 14 and um, not for children below 14. That's because we've got photo etch in it, clearly. Um, and it's telling us that we've got a completely new developed mould of the vehicle and the flak. Um, can be built in driving or firing position. Storage boxes can be built open and closed. Ammunition frames and grenades included. Detailed engine with optional removable engine cover plate. Clearly etched feet, uh, photo etched parts for the finer details, floor plates with checker pattern, anti-aircraft gun can be adjusted in height and size, injection moulded wheels with the finest detail, authentic Vomag prints, clear parts included, four marking options. Um, and then, oh, it says, says the product is in cooperation with uh, Daswork Germany and Tacon Models China. So there you go, I knew it would be Tacon. Um, so uh, then we have um, some images, um, hard to tell whether they are computer generated or the actual kit in, in grey primer, to be honest. Um, and then we have an item number of uh, DW35024, DAS Works 35 scale kit, kit 24, basically. So the box is absolutely rammed to the top. Um, the, the sprues don't fit the box. There's quite a bit of movement uh, in there. Um, but some of the sprues are almost full reaching. So the, the box is the appropriate size for the, for the kit. Um, and the instructions are right at the bottom. So uh, what I can see is we seem to have parts either... Well, the clear parts are in a Ziploc bag. The others are in resealable... Uh, bags and it seems to be a combination of a single sprue or two of the same sprue per bag. And I'm just going to lift all of this out. There's our instructions and stuff at the bottom. So we seem to have two lots of documents. Let's take a look at them. So we have uh, two lots of documents here. Uh, we have this one that says background info, history and kit. Uh, and then we have this in a, a packet here, which has got our photo etching. Um, so the photo etch appears to be primarily the grills, but we also do have a little strap or something here. I'll bring that up to the camera, you can see. Um, we've got decals in a separate bag. Uh, which is nice um, and in fairness this was all face down in the box so that's also good um, but I'm not sure what this is um, at all so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this and find out what's in there it's a resealable bag so we'll leave the photo etch and the decals in there to start with Just fold that back over and get that out of the way. So we've got ah, well that looks like our instruction book. So what's this? I thought this was as it said kit. 
Right, okay. Right, I'll have a look at this and then I'll come back to you with a structured uh, talk through. So, the first book is only included in the initial release of the kit. It says magazine exclusively only in the first kit edition and all the way through this you've got um, a, a magazine that is um, in both English and German so um, if I show you uh, you've got two columns one in English one in German all the way um, through um, and it basically talks about the development of the flak um, and um, also the development of the, the Vomag uh, basically explains that the um, anti-aircraft gun was mounted on a bush chassis and that it's a, a vehicle specifically developed for the uh, anti-aircraft gun. Lots and lots of colour photographs, uh, some of them quite handy for reference, not all of them. There's quite a bit of talk about... Um, uh, building a diorama of the last stand in Hungary um, at a monastery and where you find the guns and then they have a German, a fa fairly well-known German modeler in fairness, uh, building his own version um, but making modifications and stuff that you don't actually get in the kit. So that's probably quite an interesting read but you can't build a model like that straight from the box because you don't have the shield. Um, so... Yeah, that always a bit weird, I think, when they show you stuff that you've not got in the kit, within the, the kit um, um, supporting documents, but uh, there you go. Um, nonetheless, a really nice uh, document to have in there. If you're watching this in two or three years' time, you might not get this in, in the re-release of the kits. But what we're really interested in is our instructions. So let's have a look at them. So what we've got is an A4 landscape stapled um, instruction manual, uh, full colour on, on the top. It's not um, glossy, so it's easy on the eye, you don't, as you can see, I'm not getting any light reflection. Um, and on the back of it, it lists some other kits that they have done. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, one or two kits there, quite interesting, that you've perhaps not seen released before and stuff. So um, they're quite good at doing that, does work, doing um, subjects that haven't been pre-released. So let's have a look at this. So as I open up, can I get both of that in shot? Yes, I can. Okay, it's a bit more glossy on the inside. Uh, it might just be... No, it is. It's more glossy on the inside. That's a bit bit of a shame. Um, so we've got read before assembly, we've got how to apply decals and how to remove PE, um, showing you using an angled knife, so that's not right really. Um, I, and I, I, I would ignore that. Um, I, I would ignore that because the angle that they're showing you of in that picture of using a file um, is enough to bend it. So that's not great advice actually. Um, so ignore that. Um, dip in tepid water. Yeah, again, uh, yeah. Most people who know what they're doing skip that bit because I, I don't think the advice is absolutely perfect. Um, and then we've got our colours um, and they are calling out just MIG, um, which it's a bit of a shame when they only call out one paint, uh, paint option. Um, because it means that most of us have to go and do some work to decide what paints we're using. They do give you the colour, but there's no RAL references or anything like that. Um, so if you are a MIG user, that's nice and handy. If not, you've got a bit of work to do to understand um, what your chosen system is going to be using. Uh, many of us mix our systems these days anyway. Um, but quite a, a long list of colours there. Then we've got our sprue map, um, and what we've got is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 plastic sprues, um, one clear sprue, um, two uh, lots of photo etch, and a decal sheet. So plenty to go out there, and um, the sprues look like they're going to be quite busy, uh, and the wheels look interesting. 
so not rubber wheels that's nice to see then we start step one with building the chassis frame which uh, makes sense to me we're not starting with the engine as they often do for some reason um, so yeah we've got two side frames all the various different spars and mounting points um, it looks like the um, the bumper and the um, uh, width markers are all moulded into one. Um, that might bother me um, because that's going to be easy to damage. Uh, we'll, we will see. Um, then we're building up the uh, front suspension and applying that. So this is what I was immediately immediately saw that and you can now see you've got to turn this upside down to put the uh, suspension on and you can't do that on a flat surface because of those so that's my first observation that's a that's a design error really you want to attach those separately and probably towards the end of the build um, so um, when I say a design error they've chosen to do that it's not that they've made a mistake but I, I think they have made a mistake I think they should be separate um, yeah, they've not thought that through, I don't think. Um, right, step three, we're building up the um, rear um, axles here and suspension. Lots of separate parts, which means we should have a high level of detail. And then we are mounting that along with our um, exhaust pipe. Um, okay, the pages are, are really quite thin, so I'm turning two over. Step four, we're building up the rear tires. Now, I wouldn't be mounting these at this point, but what we can see is we've got a multi-part, a bit like uh, Mini Art do, um, building up the tires. So you've got the tread uh, well depicted. And if you look at it, these two rings here, um, part A1, those two rings there um, are the lower uh, part of the tire and then this is the upper part of the tread as is the outer so you should have a really nice crisp defined tread that's really good so you make four of those they should look really awesome when done I'm um, looking forward to that then we've got some uh, tanks of some description going on there's no plumbing for them I note though um, so uh, you're going to have to have a look at your references um, I don't know how many of these were built and how, how man, much reference material there is, because I've not looked. Um, then we're building up the lamps, which seem to have um, both clear lenses and covers. Um, that, must mean, that must mean it's an option, I think. Yeah, option. So you can have clear lenses or covers, or do one of each, just, just to be different. Um, then that looks like the exhaust silencer to me, possibly. Don't know. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's going on the uh, connecting the two exhaust sections, the bit we just put in, and the new bit going in, uh, which has got all the mounting clips molded in. So it's not just a you the quite often it's just a long rod, and you know it's wrong, but that so that looks really nicely detailed. Uh, step five: we're building up the radiator. Um, two-part radiator with um, a Vomag uh, badge going across it. Um, then we're building up the engine block, detailing the engine, the manifold and, and bits going on. There's some um, uh, side views to show you orientation, which is great. Then we've got the uh, fans and last little bits going on. Then we can see the engine um, having its radiator mounted and being put in the chassis. So that looks nice and detailed. Um, then we're putting in part of the side bodywork there. So we can see building it up, lots of little handles and clips, um, two parts, and then putting that in there. Okay. Um, the instructions seem nice and clear, I have to say, at this stage. Um, you. Um, but there is no painting instructions that I can see uh, uh, as of yet. So, yeah. Oh, I beg your pardon. There you go. H. So paint that in H. Let's just see what H is. Just out of interest. Uh, H gunmetal. So paint the engine gunmetal. Um, okay. 
So yeah, there is painting instructions. I just missed them. I beg your pardon. Right. So then we're doing um, that piece of bodywork again on the other side, and we've got what's that? It's a little bit. It's a little bit hard to see where things are being placed. You can see the the assemblies, the sub assemblies, and then that's going there, and it sort of disappears a little bit. I'm sure when you're building the model it'll make sense, but from just looking at the instructions, um, not so much. Then we're building more wheels, um, then we're putting in the um, mud guards, and it's nice to see the interior clips are separate, um, uh, and that indeed we've, we've got them. So uh, the, the little brackets there, that's really cool. Um, and they're dealing with the two sides separately, which is also good. Um, and giving us our paint instructions and then finally in step 10 on this page uh, we're building up the um, bonnet so it appears to be a bonnet with some form of armoured protection or something like that on the top of it which then mounts into there you can see the hinges you see of, of the normal bonnet and then that's going over the top that's interesting. Then that looks like we're putting pedals in this section of, of footwell. We've got the horn going in there and the fuse box on the bulkhead between the engine and the driver's compartment. Yeah, lots of little parts, lots of detail. Um, so that is then going into place. Right, I can see. I can see what we've been doing now. Um, We've got individual decals for the dials, again, very nice, um, and separate floor pan and um, uh, the section with the pedals on. So whilst very nice, it means that you can, you can paint things individually if you want to. Um, it also means that you can have more alignment problems, so be careful. Then we're building... Um, it says fight mode and transport mode, but we're building the stabilizer basically, um, which goes on the front. So it's permanently mounted on the front. They just lower it in fight, flight mode, um, but they have supplied all the parts for that. Um, looks like you, you have to trim it down to six millimeters if you want it in transport mode. Okay, that's really cool. Uh, lots of little bits going on, indicators and uh, wing mirrors and what have you. Then step 13, I've got to say this is all very logical so far. The, the build flow is very logical. Um, we are building up the driver's cab. So we've got the steering wheel, controls going in, um, an automatic weapon, is it? Or a, it might be a rifle. Um, all uh, the back end of the uh, driver's cab being uh, pulled together again out of several parts. We've got cushions going on separately there. So you can paint them separately if, if that's how you want to do it. That's very nice. And these curved doors. And then when we flip over, uh, step 14, we're assembling the other curved door. We've got um, tread plates and bits and pieces going in, another rifle. Uh, and then we're building up the windscreen, which is three parts, the clear past plastic one, and then the two separate um, sun visors. Uh, unfortunately, they've chosen to mould the windscreen wipers into the plastic. I never like that. Uh, I know why they do it, because if you make them out of plastic, they can be oversized, but Mini Art have been doing separate ones for ages now, and they work well. They could have done them in photo etch. They could have done a combination of plastic arm and photo etch blade. There's lots of options. Moulding it in, some people find it really difficult to paint them. Um, so, yeah, I, I, everyone's going to have a slightly different view on that. Personally, I'd prefer them to have done it as a separate item. Uh, but there you go. Um, right, now we're building the main uh, body area that mounts the gun. Um, very recognisable shape of the uh, 88 there. Um, and we're starting to populate that with some uh, bits and pieces. This looks like the hinges for the mesh sides that fold down. Um, lots of gussets and bits and pieces going in. Um, 
then we're building up we're not quite sure what they are uh, they look like they look like feet don't they um, yeah I think they're their feet um, or maybe chairs there's, there's a hinge on the back and a fold-out leg maybe maybe a chair possibly don't know um, yeah then when, when we look at 17 we, we can see them uh, we're doing them again and this time they're definitely seats so yeah okay cool then 18 we're doing more uh, main body uh, floor pan type of stuff this time building the interior where we've got drawers and uh, ammunition storage and that sort of stuff um, I suspect spare wheel being made there and then we've got the ammunition racks being built up then installing them we've got ammunition um, looks like we've got three of them um, which isn't many for how many you've got maybe we've got some little blank ends so we can populate it don't know um, then as we go over page uh, 15 now and step 20 and we're building some of the the uh, back structure of the bodywork here um, so this is the inside of the side panel you can see uh, so we've got the inside structure which is nice that's forming the inside of the the mud guard there uh, we've got the doors and the handles separate uh, they're all poseable because of how they've done the hinge you can mount them open so I know that's ammunition. I don't know what that is for storing and there doesn't appear to be any content for that, anything to go inside that. Um, then we're doing the other side. Um, then we're doing the, there's a winder here, which is going on the back. So the same as what is mounted on the bogey wheels for the um, um, 88 when it's on its um, little bogies for, for being towed. It's the same, uh, same item. It's recognisable. Um, then we're building up the um, back section there, which has our door going in again, which I'm guessing we could pose open so you could see the, the spare wheel in there. Um, and then we've got another one of these um, stabilisers being built up. Uh, then we're building up the mesh. Uh, what does that mean? Because that almost looks like you're doing three layers of mesh. So is that right? What does the heart mean? Instant glue for metal. Right, okay. It looks like three layers of mesh. That might be right. They might be trying to emulate three different um, weaves. Um, so that's interesting. That's really interesting. That will look very authentic if that's what they've done um, and then we've got some small detail parts going on um, the little extendable ribs there uh, we've got if building in travel mode install the outer rigger leg first before installing the door okay uh, so that'll be in its stowed position I've got you um, so we've got these um, gun racks going in our little side pieces going in so I'm guessing we can have them open or closed then we're building up the other side pretty much exactly the same um, then we've got the outrigger legs here oh, okay so if it's in travel mode you want to put them in the stowed position if building in travel mode install the outrigger leg first before installing the door right okay so it's basically swung underneath or if you're gonna I, I suspect a lot of people are going to want to build this with everything folded out why why wouldn't you um so in fight mode as they put it it's um sticking out there we've got this little mounting arm um yeah and we've got some brackets going on there so yeah really cool um it's a it's a different arm or a modified version of the arm because the foot plate is this sort of um elliptical shape whereas um, on the um, on the actual 88 toed version it's a square plate so 
uh, certainly that bit's modified interesting um, so yeah doing it on the other side uh, step 29 and we start building the the gun um, so we've got all sorts of bits and pieces coming together here um, the, the drawings are in grey and the background being this sort of textured um, look um, it's not quite as clear as it could be you see see there in the black it's much clearer and suddenly we've gone to this sort of paler grey I don't know if that's just on this page you know it carries on like that and that's not as easy to see so don't like that I would prefer them to have kept it in the black what, why have they done that? Up until now, I would say the instructions were fairly good and clear and certainly better than some other um, uh, of their instructions that I've used before, like uh, on that flipping submarine they did. Um, yeah, but we can see, you just have to study it a little bit more. Um, we can see breach blocks and things going in. Um, if you've built an 88 before, and, and I have, um, a lot of this looks quite familiar. Yeah, I don't know what uh, almost any of it is, but I know that we're building the back end of the gun. Um, then we've uh, we've got all sorts of separate gears and things, so that will add to the the detail um, and the ability to weather things if you wish. Then we've got our, our mounting uh, plate going on, which is geared as well, which is nice. Mounting that all on. Um, yeah, lots of recognisable components here. All looks very nice, doesn't it? But it's not as easy to see now they've changed to grey. That's really annoying. Lots of parts of this gun. The gun's going to look very, very detailed. And then finally we've got our um, seats going on and the end of the barrel. And notice that the um, gun type, uh, the gun type here is all the same. That's because it's all anti-aircraft. Uh, this section here is different, whether it's anti-aircraft or not. Um, so, as an artillery piece, it has a smoother one without all these little nicks in. Um, and then we're mounting the gun in step forty, along with one or two other bits on the cab. And that is it. So. 40 steps, quite a detailed build, instructions generally very good. Why they decided to change the colour to grey at the back, I don't know. Um, but they went back to black for the for mounting the gun. Um, so you build the gun up and install it fully. I'm, I have no doubt you could put the base on and build it up on the model if you wished, but that's quite handy for painting, isn't it? Um, very detailed looking build, I've got to say. And then we've got our paint instructions. So what have they done? They've done, yeah, one page per. So we get a uh, top down view, uh, front and back view, and the two different side views. And um, yeah, they're quite simple paint instructions, really. The square letters are the paints. So do everything in blue gray and do the seats in tan or whatever that is. Uh, and, and then at the back they're asking you to paint the green and the red of the rear lamps and then on the front they're asking you to do white on the depth markers and that's pretty much it the rest of it is decals um, so all these numbers in the round um, are decals um, we've got the tire pressure uh, uh, annotations there which is nice um, yeah, so um, paint scheme A, paint scheme uh, B um, has a slight difference, which is that the um, seats appear to be wood, whereas they're painted there. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much identical, uh, just with different markings. Um, notice that in all of the paint schemes, the um, the uh, convoy lenses aren't on the lamps uh, again wood seats but otherwise pretty much the same so there's no 
different options for the vehicle if it's in a different paint scheme it's the same model different paint schemes um, and then finally um, we have our camouflage version and that completes our instructions okay decals next and uh, well they're certainly not cartograph I don't know who's made them there's no makers mark on there and um, they're quite matte um, and they feel a bit chunky underneath my, my finger, but not too bad. I'm not, I'm not talking Tamiya chunky. Um, the, um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of excess um, decal film either, so that's all good. So we've got our gun markings um, across the top um, there, and then we've got our different number plates, identification marks, um, the coloured identification marks, um, which are quite muted colours, I'm guessing that's that's correct. Um, but um, the the mat makes them not quite feel quite like they've got the lustre that you see on other decals. But that that's that might be right. Um, and then we've got our um, separate dials there, which have very little in the way of excess film, so should go straight in without having to do any trimming, which is handy. And then we've got our little um, tire pressure markers so not many decals but um clearly all that you need so yeah and um, there's no um uh plates or anything like that manufacturers plates or anything like that that you might find in the uh, cabin so we are missing some um, but it covers all the major stuff uh, and there's nothing much wrong with them right photo etch and um sorry about the uh reflection that's not my fault that's Tacom, who've decided to uh, put this film over it. I, I absolutely hate it, and it's supposed to be scratch protection, but you actually don't need it, and it means you've got to go and clean your parts. So it just creates work. Um, so you've got this little small one here, which has got a strap on and, and something else. I think they're probably for the gun. Um, but yeah, they're quite nicely done. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and then you've got this, and what, they, what they've done is three for each side, as we saw in the instructions. Um, and that's really good, so you'll have two that will be the same, and one that will be different, so that when you sandwich them together, you get this look of an interweaved wire, which is how the mesh would have originally been. So I think that's a really nice idea, I love it. Sorry, it's messing with my lighting, having that like that, so I'm going to hold it. So uh, I really love that idea. Um, although it makes it thicker, and it's probably oversized in terms of thickness, the look will be right. Um, and that's what I often say uh, about models. We, there's always a sort of a payoff between accuracy, ability to, to mould something, uh, and, and scale. So, um, you know, if you're going to put an interior engine in given the thicknesses of plastics that you have to use you've got to either make the engine under undersize or the um, surrounding um, framework of the model oversize so there's always a payoff so this might be a bit thicker than it should be but it will look aesthetically correct which is what you're trying to achieve so um, I think that's a lovely idea I like that idea a lot right, then first sprue out of the box and doing this in the order they come out of the box um, is E and we have our um, bumper on here which um, has the Vomag logos and these um, width markers and compared to width markers that I'm used to on other vehicles these are extremely chunky and I'm guessing that is correct and it's how it how it should be they were chunky I'm less worried about them breaking off now I see them but I still don't like the idea that they're there, um, especially as they're this chunky. There's no reason why they couldn't have been mounted on separately, and I still think that's what they should have done. Um, we've got a bit of seam on there that needs cleaning up, um, but the moulding is nice and crisp. And then we've got um, all sorts of body parts there, including doors. And it's nice to see that you've got the little rim around the, the door recess for the handle. Um, because that would have been a separate piece going in and they show that so that's really nice um, the molding detail is good there um, yeah very nice actually 
Sprue H now, and I've got two parts that have come off, broken off. They would have been here, uh, and I have no doubt that what happened is they were moulded that way, sticking out, and in the box they've just got bent and battered and come off. Um, not damaged, luckily. Um, it's on um, swivel pins, but these points move. Um, on the actual gun as you elevate it they change direction so that could have been really serious there's a seam going across it that's a bit ugly as well so we've got a couple of broken off parts there um, the actual parts themselves they're um, really quite nice you've got um, some nice crisp molding yeah Um, basic seam clean up that's the only thing you've got on on here to do uh, we've got a couple of slide molded parts here uh, I'm not quite sure what they are but they've they've done detail on that one and openings on those um, I've got to say the the, the, the little wheels here um, they've got a bit of flash on but they do look a little bit oversized, they, they do look a bit chunky. Uh, the detail's nice on them though, they will look the part, that's the main thing. And whatever they are, they're very finely moulded, lovely detail on them. I think they're the cases that go over the top of those. And you can see through them, usually they're solid, so that's really nice. Coupling detail is lovely. Yeah, very nice actually. Can't grumble with those. Clear parts now and the windscreen whilst being a little bit on the chunky side um, in terms of thickness is really nice and clear. The windscreen wiper is moulded on very nicely and shouldn't be difficult to mask the glass off. It's nice straight edges but um, the motor is uh, that's behind it is molded in as well and what that's doing is it's creating a little bit of pull in the windscreen there it also means that when you paint it it's not going to quite look right um, so I wish they'd done that separately the motors and the windscreen wipers separately <clears throat> would have been a much better way forward I think so that's um, a little disappointing but otherwise it's it's nicely presented um, the, the, everything's moulded in there there's no masks provided in the kit so you're going to have to mask this yourself um, yeah uh, the lenses for the headlamps are lovely we've got the um, texturing on the inside which gives you the um, reflector feel uh, and that looks really good you'll see that more clearly when I take a photo and then we've got these little three small lamps here uh, two for the front, one for the reflector, I think. Uh, nothing wrong with them. Um, I just don't like the way they've gone about the windscreen, that's all. Okay, um, sprue K now. Um, and we've got parts for the gun here. Um, again, all nice and crisply moulded. Um, We've got some lovely detail on here. We've got all the little fastener detail of various different sizes on there. Looks great. The gearing on the uh, the teeth of the gearing, really nicely done. Under a wash will pop out beautifully. Um, we've got a seam down the middle of this one though, unfortunately. So that means you've got to get in and clean out between each individual tooth on this part here. Come on, focus. So there we've got teeth with a seam. You'll see it when I take the photograph. Um, yeah, um, otherwise, nothing wrong with it. Looks really nice. Bolt heads are all nicely depicted. Interesting shapes um, and what have you. We've got a little bit of ejector pin stuff to take off the inside of that. Um, but, you know, you've got nice detail on the outside and you've got lovely detail with all the fasteners on the inside. They've not skimped on the detail looks really good um, I'm not sure if those are going to be visible those ejector pins I think they're all going to be covered by boxes and things going on there um, which is which is good um, 
always a problem for moulders where they put their ejector pins but they are putting lots of additional ones in to try and get around um, having them visible so I suspect none of these will be visible although that one I think could be Sprue M now and it's more gun parts including the um, barrels which are two parts um, and then you've got a number of slide moulded um, uh, parts here that are all in one so other than the seam clean up that should be fairly easy to put together um, the base has lovely um, nuts on it with the bolts showing through which is really nice um, lots of lovely detail on them uh, moulding is lovely and crisp again I don't see any issues here at all yeah very nice Sprue N, we've got two of these, um, and it's a lot of the um, repetitive chassis parts on here, which is why we've got two. So we've got rifles, we've got um, tanks, we've got all sorts of gussets and bits. These are the hinges for the uh, mesh sides. We've got the, um, at least I think they're the back plates for, for the um, ammunition racks. Um, We've got that little um, winding spool that goes on the back there, some um, side doors, seat cushions. Um, yeah, all sorts of um, bits and pieces here. Um, what I've got to say, um, first thing that's catching my eye is the rifles um, are very, very nicely detailed. Um, although there's a lot of sprue connectors on them and for such thin parts, that worries me a little bit. But um, yeah, you're going to have to be very careful with those. Um, this one seems to have quite a bit of seam on it for some reason. Um, more noticeable than, than on others. I'm not quite sure why. Nice to see we've got um, sprue gates being um, connected on uh, clean-up surfaces anyway. So that means we're not damaging the outside surface at all. So that's really nice. Um, the seats... They're a bit clinical, uh, I think, is, is the is what I'm looking for. Um, so there's no sort of lots of creases or anything in them. They're sort of factory fresh, if that makes sense. So showroom condition is what I usually refer to. Um, the yeah, the leaf springs, although very nicely shaped, suffer from the problem a lot of leaf springs have. Um, and that is a lot of heavy seams, so a huge amount of cleanup on those, both sides. Yeah, a huge amount of cleanup. That'll be a very tedious job because you've got to do that, and then that, and then that, and then that, and then do the other piece on the other sprue. So <laughs> you'll be there forever. Yeah, um, definitely want to do in between jobs. Um, otherwise, all very nice. Although there is, yeah, there is flash in that one there. You see how the circle is not quite the same shape. That's flash, so a little bit of flash in places. Nothing major, nothing to get hung up on. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Sprue U now, and again we've got two of these. Um, and we've got the shells, so... It said times three in the instructions, but we've we've got four shells if we've got two sprues. So um, there you go. That's a bonus. We've got one extra free. Um, it's going to suffer from the same problems uh, that a lot of um, ammunition shells have, um, is that the sprue gate is on the base. And if you're putting that in the ammunition rack, actually, that's the face you're going to see. So there'll be absolutely zero detail on, on there. So um, you need to find some 135 etch. I believe Aber do it, as I seem to recall, um, for the um, Flak 88. And that has the little discs that goes on the end there to just um, put your detail on. There should be some writing on there and a centre impression and that sort of stuff. You know what's on the end of a shell base of a shell so you need that to go on if you're going to be showing it off otherwise you could stack them up leaning on the vehicle or something like that um, yeah um, then we've got the feet there for the stabilizers um, I'm guessing there's something goes inside them 
Uh, no, actually, I don't think there is. So we've got a couple of eject pins to deal with. I don't remember seeing these. I'm not quite sure what they are. Uh, they almost look like tarpaulin cages for, for the back of the vehicle, but don't know. Um, we've got some tiny little um, C-clips, um, latches, um, handles of different types. Lots of very small details on here. Yeah, lots of small detail. Um, all nicely moulded though, no issues with any of this. Sprue D and we've got large parts on here again. So we've got engine block, um, doors, um, ammunition racks, mud guards, um, various bulkheads and the radiator um, and let's start with the radiator we've got nice patination on there for the uh, grill so that's really nice the, the mesh of the radiator um, yeah and then our outer surfaces for the ammunition racks all very nice uh, then we've got these doors I think that's the inside of that so that's our inside face, that's our outside face. It's got this little bit of floor welded into it, which is interesting. A um, little bracket there. This is our firewall and that has sink in it. So this big lump of plastic on the back where we've got this junction point for all these um, uh, tubing has produced some uh, sink there. Um, yeah, you will have to deal with it. It's, it's quite visible. You can just see that in the light there. Um, so even though we've got boxes on, I think you might have to deal with that. Um, box, not sure what that's for. Um, engine block has nice detail. Yeah, all the fastener heads are nicely done. Very nice. Yeah, all good. The mud guards molded into one but they look right they do look right they've they've um put a chamfer on the uh inside edge there to get that that look nice and thin so when you look at that sort of angle onto the that way it looks thin um so they've really thought about that that's good um you might want to take those fastener heads off and redo them because they're at a molded angle um yeah, otherwise, all very nice. Very, very nice. One of our bigger sprues, Sprue G, um, again, rows and rows and rows of tiny, tiny parts. Um, the pedals are, <laughs> the uh, foot pedals are slide molded and I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that. Can I get the camera to focus on that? They've got letters imprinted on them um, we'll take a photo and you'll see it um, so yeah very nicely done um, so we've got all sorts of little rods and bits and pieces um, some of it running gear um, some of it I'm not sure manifold there some form of framework we've got our headlamps which don't have bulbs in but we can we can do bulbs not a problem um, steering wheel has got some flash on so some cleanup needed on that um, then we've got all sorts of other sort of boxes and the fan bell and all sorts of bits that that build up to make bigger bits <laughs> um, we've got the uh, just laughing at some of the things I say when I'm filming um, we've got the um, logo here for across the radiator which is quite nicely done very thin so that's good um, more heavy seam on the leaf springs so more clean up there um, yeah uh, and then mudguard brackets which are very delicate not quite sure what that is but yeah um, Lots and lots of parts, um, bit of flash, fair bit of clean up. There's flash on various things on here, actually. Um, 
I don't think we've got any ejector pin mark issues and it's all again very crisply molded yeah very nice very nice right sprue a we have two of these it focuses on the wheels so what we've got is molded in front hubs um, then the separate rings that build up the tire tread and then rear hubs separate so um, they're not going to be uh, some people prefer the tires to be separate for painting uh, they're not going to be difficult to paint though i don't think uh, we've got lovely um sidewall uh, markings on here both the numbers and the uh, brand name which is continental in this case um, and then yeah you've got these lovely rings and what they've done is they've built it up as i said in the instructions with high tread and low tread so that you get the correct texture and they've done a really nice job of the edge there really nice molding to yeah that it's lovely these are really nice wheels much better than rubber wheels by country mile you're not going to need resin replacements which is lovely um, molding of the actual wheel hubs themselves feels fairly crisp um, mm, I'm not sure if the hubs are as good as they could be um, I think they're missing some bolt detail I'm not 100% sure though so uh, it might be that they're just slightly different than other ones I've seen but on the FAMO for example at this at the end of the the leg on the outer ring there's a, a bolt now it could just be these are different but it uh, looks like the bolts are missing to me but I might be wrong um, then we've got these three little um, inner hubs and we have to take the, these things out of the back well we've got a lot of clean up on the back of them actually hadn't noticed that all of those needs I mean they just need trimming off snapping off um, yeah um, and most of our clean up is on the inside you are going to have um, a mold seam on the inside of the bigger rings whereas on the inner ones you're not going to have to worry but a very very nice set of uh, wheel parts there I, I really I really like them despite the uh, the careful clean up we've got to do okay part uh, sprue B now uh, and we've got big floor pan sections here uh, the bonnet and the armoured bonnet cover and then we've got um, the um, bulkhead here with the uh, dashboard uh, moulded into it. Um, on the undersides, if you're a, a perfectionist, you've got a lot of ejector pins to sort out and they're all countersunk, so it's a lot of filling. Um, what really interests me is the bonnet. So this is clearly the original bonnet, um, possibly the bus bonnet as it was, because you can see the hinge there for that. And then you've got this armoured thing with these openings, but what are the openings to? So I wonder if, if maybe this was then filled with concrete or something, so it could be lifted off um, or filled with sand or, or something rather than... Because it's quite thick, I can't imagine it was... Um, a great big thick piece of, of armour so I, I wonder if they were filling holes I don't know if you know let me know in the comments um, or it might be fun to speculate what could have been put in there um, yeah um, then we've got um, checker plate which is very nicely done feels and looks in scale so really nice um, and then we've got this back section here um, with I'm guessing that those were wood strips there for um, and there's some rack there for for storing fuel cans or something I don't know um, and then our dashboard which will come to life when painted and with a little decal dials on and what have you so yeah all fairly straightforward that I think right then sprue F and this is uh, another large sprue here and we've got large items and the, the largest single item is the um, chassis sides and um, it gives you an impression of the finished size of the vehicle because this is over 30 centimetres long, these chassis sides. Um, 
what we've got um, as I look at these chassis sides is damage um, on this one and can't tell just having a look yeah on there as well so we've got these very delicate little bits sticking out on this side here can you see they're all over the place they've been damaged in the box this is the um, sprue that's second from the bottom and all these other sprues have been piled on top and there's no protection for this um, and they are completely damaged they've tried to protect them they've put these things in here but they haven't done the job because as I look at them they're only really as tall as the part they needed to be a bit a bit taller um, so they knew that they were at risk but they haven't done enough to protect them um, and on um, these ones are okay these ones they have a point but it's bent and it's broke and I will have to make replacement part for that because it's completely deformed so that's annoying um, they knew that it was a risk but they went ahead and did it anyway for me when you've got so many small parts on this kit they, they should have done those as separate parts you know or you know or even just a separate section that you that you glued in you know they could have made this section from this point here to this point here a separate part so that they could cast it in a different uh, make it in a different orientation um, you'd you'd not have any joins when you when you glued it in I don't know there's no such thing as a perfect kit but it's annoying when your parts are damaged especially when you've spent good money um, on it um, the rest of it though uh, very nice and crisp the uh, grill grills look nice they're not see-through they're not that as sophisticated as, as that but they they do aesthetically look right as you look at them um, seats again uh, a bit too clinical for me um, there's no no folds and creases um, so factory fresh again um, this is a nice touch though they have slide molded this part so that we can get um, detail across the top there so that's very nice so yeah um, if you're going to have the um, seats folded up um, and this becomes visible you've got some ejector pins to deal with um, and then we've got our support legs which are okay I can see that we've got some sink in them where these ejector pin marks are we've got some sink um, might not be visible under primer yeah I think it's prime it and then make a decision on that one um, otherwise all looks really quite nice Our final sprue is C and um, we've got quite a few brackets on here. They're just um, featureless bits of plastic um, and dividers and bits and pieces. But, you know, um, there's a, quite a need for those in this build. Um, so we've got lots of those. Then we've got, I think that must be the sump, um, which is really nicely done. We've got really nice texturing on there and the bolt heads this is our um, foot plate foot well where the pedals go and we've got nice checker detail on there um, and the um, foot plates on the outside um, again nice texturing on that as well this is our exhaust which is really lovely with all these clips on I uh, really like that there is an ejector pin there though that's a bit of a shame um, but easy to sort and it's got a nice open ending there they've managed to mold that not even slide molded so um, that's that's lovely and then we've got more of it, the exhaust here um, and even the seams not too heavy so clean up shouldn't be too bad yeah yeah that's it
there we have it the uh, 8.8 centimeter flak out nine ton vomag from das work in one to 35 scale what is my first impression right well let's start as i uh, tend to do these days and and go through what are the main things that modelers are trying to um, get um, and how do they score well let's start with the instructions and um, although we've got this lovely brochure that gives us a, 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 um, a lot of history and some color photographs and stuff I can't include that in my assessment because it's only in the initial release um, so most people over time as they get this kit will not have that so i can't include that and there is nothing so uh not like tamia that includes that sort of stuff in all their kits they're just doing it for initial release which means you depends on which way you, you want to look at it you're either getting more for your money in the initial release or you're getting less for your money um after the initial release it depends on how you want to view it, I suppose. Um, so uh, the instructions themselves were okay. Um, the flow makes sense. You're building. You're not building lots of sub assemblies and having to store them. You're building things and progressing through. So we pretty much went um, for the the chassis first, and then built from the front and worked backwards, um, which all sort of uh, made sense. The written instructions are in English, so um, that, that's fine for those of us that speak English, but, um, uh, you know, it's not accessible to uh, everyone, although I think the key gets you where you need to be. So can you open the instructions and build the model from A to B without any issues? Yes, I think so. Uh, it was very odd that they suddenly went to a pale grey print on the same background later on, um, when they got to the gun, I, I don't know why they've done that. It's a bit weird, um, uh, and it was certainly less easy to re to read. Now, last time um, I built a, a, a Dazworks kit, I said it was very much um, style over substance. That was the submarine, which I didn't think was um, either value for money or um, a, a particularly uh, well researched kit, to be honest. Um, but this feels very different. The, the instructions were um, a bit less um, stylish and a bit more functional, and I, I really um, liked that. Um, they were clear to follow. So instructions, no problem. Um, decals, they look okay. There's no, no major issues with them. Um, so, uh, yep, um, okay with the decals. Uh, photo etch, I think... Um, there's very little photo etch. What there is, is nicely done. I don't take points off for putting that horrid film on that's needlessly done by some Asian uh, manufacturers, but um, so, um, you know, nothing wrong with the photo etch. And actually the photo etch has got quite a nice innovation with, with the sandwiching layers together to get the, the right look. So I really like that. It won't be perfect, but you know it won't look woven but it'll give you the right mesh pattern so you know there's always a compromise so I'm quite happy with that um so nothing really wrong with the photo etch either um then that leaves you with the plastic parts um some minor issues i mean uh, put, putting aside the fact that we've got a bit of flash in places don't bother about that so much. Clean up of plastic parts is standard, whatever the kit manufacturer. So uh, I'm not worried about uh, that at all. You expect clean up, and if some of the seamers got a bit flashy, does it really matter? Not really. Um, so uh, I, I'm not worried about that. Clean up of the parts is, is standard. Um, we've got some damaged parts, which is annoying. Um, and that's just a, a, a lack of thought in in the packaging as much as anything. Um, but I do think they could have moulded that differently. And um, yeah, it 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 definitely do, can't give them full marks for 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 those plastic parts. We had some plastic parts broken off again. Uh, uh, same thing. They're not thought through uh, when they've designed the sprue how they're going to pack that. Um, so um, if this was trumpeter, um, some of those parts would have been wrapped in foam to stop them getting damaged. If this was mini art, they'd have 
sandwiched it all together and they would have got damaged. So, you know, I, it's a difficult one. Um, I didn't like this part with, with these um, things on. I think they should be separate parts, but it's all, all minor stuff. Um, the windscreen wipers, they're overscale, they're chunky, molded in. In fact, they're not even, uh, I mean, when you look at this picture, these look so much finer than what you actually get. And the fact that the motors are molded in the back, I, th I think the windscreen could be a lot better. Um, so certainly not saying it's brilliant. What we have got is well molded, uh, nicely detailed, and um, it should come together without any problems. So all in all, what we've got here is a fantastic little kit of an unusual subject. And I like it when they do something that's completely off piece. It's not like we've got yet another FAMO towing an, an 88. Um, so yeah, really nice to see this um, anti-aircraft gun on the Vomag. I, I think it's a nice looking model. Uh, generally well executed um, and uh, probably um, the, the best of the Daswork kits that I've got. And I've not got many because after the submarine, I said, I'm probably not going to buy Daswork again. It's all sort of, it was overpriced and um, wasn't particularly well researched. And you ended up building a model that didn't actually look like the, the submarine. This, I suspect, is very much different. <clears throat> Seems to be well written. Seems to be well researched, seems to look um, accurate as well. Um, you've uh, One drawback is you've not got enough shells. I would like them to have done some, um, even if they had an option where they put um, a plate in that's got some shells molded in, um, so you can see the end detail, that would have been nice, or maybe some little um, stubby ends that you could put in with the... With the um, uh, end cap uh, detail molded on so there's definitely things they could improve on this kit it's by no means the best kit i've ever had or anything like that um it's very very nice though am i glad i got it absolutely um really looking forward to building this something quite different so yeah it's a lovely kit it's not perfect um it's it it could be better but you know, there's not a lot more they could do differently. And a lot of the things we're talking about are just personal perspective, minor niggles. So, yeah, all in all, this is a nice kit. Um, and I am definitely looking forward to building it. So there you go. If you're wondering about Dasverk's brand new release, as I'm recording this on the 24th of March, it's been out a couple of days now, um, if you were wondering what it was going to be like, you now know. You now know what you get in the uh, in the kit. And um, yeah, I, I hope that was interesting and useful. So thank you very much for looking in. You enjoy your modelling and I will see you very soon for another First Impressions. Or maybe you can come and watch me on a Friday night with live chat. Do a build. Thanks and bye for now. Hi and thanks for watching. You can support the channel by hitting the like button and if you haven't subscribed please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self-funded channel and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee so if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You will find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.